Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, depending on where you are in the world. Hello, everyone, and welcome to my photography masterclass here on Adobe Live. My name is Terry White, worldwide design and photography evangelist, and it's great to see so many of you joining me live each week, every Friday when we do these masterclasses. So um, just a quick couple of housekeeping things, and then we'll jump right into it. Uh, because we only have an hour so or less than an hour now so welcome everybody I see Steve Paul Sean uh, Colby Kat Nick thanks for being here um, Tim Mobeast always here great to have you as well as one of our moderators and we're going to uh, have some fun as you can see I'm I'm in the photography part of my studio uh, as opposed to my traditional live streaming studio which is across over there you can't see it but anyway, um, so a couple of housekeeping rules. Uh, first and foremost, if you're watching this on another platform, whether it be Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, wherever you are, great, thanks for watching. But if you wanna participate in the chat, especially today, because I'm only gonna have one chat window open, I won't even see your, your comments if you're on another platform, head over to behance.net slash live, or bbe.net slash live. Uh, Adobe Live, and you will actually see me live there, and you can click and you can participate in the chat. All right. Hey, Bobby, yes, it's been a while. for Not for me, but it's <laughs> been a while for you. Great to see you here. Uh, second housekeeping rule. Um, last week, we only had a half hour uh, for the masterclass, so sorry that got cut short, but we were making room for a new segment, uh, which is the Premier Pro Creative D Daily Creative Challenge. Well, we're not doing that this week, so I get to do the full hour again. However... Next week, there will be a break in the schedule. Next week, Adobe is taking off. So like we're off next week. There will be no master classes next Friday. Um, so sorry, <laughs> you can double up on some of the content that you haven't watched yet. But um, we, yeah, it's, it's been a long few couple months. So we're, we're all taking a day off. Uh, so with that said, hey, Jackie. Um, so with that said, uh, today we're gonna do the hour. We're gonna do next week, no master class. And of course, you can go back and watch the replays. And if you're watching the replay now, thank you. I always appreciate the replay numbers as well. So today, uh, we're going to be back in the studio doing some live shoots. Uh, I have more flowers. I have new flowers that are fresh and just got picked up. Uh, so we'll, we'll have some fun with that. I also am going to be doing a lot of uh, new gear, testing new gear. Uh, as a matter of fact, so I'm as a matter of fact testing one piece right now, this wireless microphone. So hopefully, now that I'm not tethered, you won't see you hear a bunch of distortion when I'm moving around. Um, I know that the mic was sometimes rubbing against different things. Uh, hopefully we won't have that anymore. All right, um, let's talk about the gear. Now I'm gonna paste a link in the chat in a few minutes at some point. If I forget, just remind me. But I'm gonna paste, the, or paste all the uh, pieces of gear that I'm talking about uh, with the exception of one cable, I just thought about it and I just I didn't have that one outlined. But all the gear that I'm going to mention right now, I'll put links to it because I know a lot of people, what was that uh, thing you were using? What was that light you were using? So forth and so on. So that way, um, my mic is cutting out. Is anyone else? Look like it. My mic cutting out. Bake Like a Pro says it is. Uh, but anyway, uh, if... I have nothing, is there a problem? All right, so let me know if the mic's good. But anyway, uh, let's talk about the gear that we're gonna be doing. So I am uh, shooting once again with the Nikon Z6. So that's not new. Uh, a little, make sure you unmute the stream. The stream is on, oh, I'm talking to someone else. Yes, it is. All right, let me turn it, let me, let me, maybe it's cutting out that way. Let me turn it down a bit. It might be clipping. So let's hope that it's not doing that. And I'll ask, actually adjust it here. And hopefully that will resolve it. All right. Is that better? It's a little crackly. So yeah, I turned it down a bit because sometimes if it's over modulated, it can clip a little. All right. So I'll try and do my best. Uh, the yes mic is cutting out. Oh no. YouTube audio is not singing. Oh no. All right. So. <laughs> We'll, I'll keep working on microphones. Uh, but anyway, uh, Nikon Z6, and I've got the orange tether cable from Tether Tools. That's what I don't have in the list. It's better now, good. And um, this black cable is 
Uh, move them. Please keep the mic a little closer to my mouth. All right, I'll try and do that. How, that, how about that? Okay. And I've got this um, black HDMI cable so that you'll be able to see the settings. Now, it's sitting normally on my tripod, but in this case, it's um, sitting on a ball head on a platypod. So platypod are these flat plates that you can use in places where you can't use a, um, where you can't use Okay, where you can't use a um, tr traditional tripod. In addition to that, there are these two arms that are holding these little cube lights. So I'm going to go ahead and turn these on now and crank them all the way up. And that's what I'm going to use to light the subject. Now, so that you can get a shot or see what the studio looks like, let's go ahead and take a look at it. So camera, lights, flowers macro lens so we're going to be using a macro lens today we're going to be doing some close-up photography and hopefully uh you, you guys can take advantage of that i i don't normally do macro i'm experimenting as i go so this is kind of one of those hey i got some time might as well try a method of photography i'm not used to uh <laughs> not used to or shooting i've been trying to take photos of flowers uh ninth ninth lockdown all right so, we're going to tether, we're going to talk about the advantages of a macro lens, then we're going to have to disconnect the tether, I'm going to tell you why when we get ready to do that, and we'll go ahead and take some shots and we'll just progress like we did the last time we did a portrait shoot. We did the different, um, we did the different lighting setups, this time we're not really changing the lighting setups, but we will be changing the settings on the camera. So let me turn the camera on. Let me check the battery. It's full. Good. Let me show you uh, the camera settings so that you guys can see it. And also let me, and before we even get to the camera settings, let's get to Lightroom and let's go ahead and set up Lightroom. All right. So I've got Lightroom Classic. And by the way, you might notice I'm on Windows today. Uh, the great folks over at Intel and HP sent over a, a new HP ZBook Studio 360 or X360 G5. I think that's the whole thing. I've got that. That'll be in the link as well. Okay. But anyway, um, uh, yeah, <laughs> we'll be doing this on Windows today because I know a lot of people are, oh, why are you always doing it on the Mac? Can't you do it on Windows? Does it work on Windows? Is it the same on Windows? So my Windows users will now get a chance to see it on their platform. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and come down to, where's my mouse? Okay, bring it down. There we are. Now let's go ahead and uh, go to File, Tether Capture, Start Tether Capture, and we're going to call this one uh, Macro PMC, Photography Masterclass. We'll start with image number one. We're going to go ahead and, yes, add them to a collection as well. We'll create a new collection and we'll call this one Macro Flowers uh, PMC for Photography Masterclass. And we'll go ahead and click Create. Okay, next up, yes, I want my metadata included. And I don't need any keywords for this just yet. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now, when I click OK, it'll go out over the cable, look, find the camera. It found the camera and brought up the tether bar down at the bottom here and here it is it's showing me that i've got the z6 it's showing me the current settings uh, so i can move this around and i can hit uh i can hit i believe it's control t to hide it or control t to bring it back up of course on the mac that would be command t now those are the settings i had last when i was practicing i didn't have um I didn't have the lights turned on, so I was shooting at a little bit of higher ISO and a slower shutter speed. And there was one thing that was throwing me off. So the thing that was throwing me off was I was looking at the back of the LCD and the shot looked great. And I, and I was shooting to a memory card and I went click, 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 got all my shots, brought them into the, um, brought them into the computer into Lightroom and they were all completely dark. And I was like, wait a minute. I was seeing nicely bright lit photos. Why are they all dark? I didn't review them. I was just looking at the LCD. 
Then it reminded me of a setting I changed a long time ago. So I'm going to show you that setting right now. Uh, here, let's go to this. All right, so let's go to the settings. So I'm going to go to menu. I've got a quick, uh, I've got a quick menu set up for this, but you see where it says apply settings to live view? That is off by default. I, um, well actually it's on by default. So I turned it off because when I'm shooting in a studio with strobes, the LCD is not showing me reality. But when you're shooting in natural light, meaning continuous light like I'm about to do, then the LCD is reality because that is the light that's going to be in the room. So what it wasn't taking into account for was the flash. So again, I was looking at something that wasn't realistic, that wasn't right. So you can go in, uh, I can tap on this. It's a, um, and so if I say uh, apply settings to, oh, hang on. If I say apply settings to live view on, now whatever the live view, whatever settings I change, the live view will rep represent them before I ever take the shot. So that way you're getting a preview of what the picture is going to look like before you actually take it. And again, that's not an issue for DSLRs. For DSLRs, you're looking through the lens. You're good. For mirrorless, you're actually looking at a, a little tiny computer monitor in the camera. So you're looking at an LCD display and therefore it's not going to show you reality unless you tell it to. All right, um, so now that that's been done, I could see how much brighter that got because this is what it would actually take based on the settings I have set right now. Okay, so let's change those settings. Let's uh, first of all go to the ISO. Let's bring the ISO back down. We can go down to maybe 100. That's where I like to keep it. And that's so much better already. Now, the thing about a macro lens, and this is one of the things that I'm, I'm not used to shooting macro. So this is one of the things I was like, uh, clicking and, and, and taking shots and I was like they just don't look in focus they just uh, and here's why this is a hundred and five millimeter f28 you can go all the way up you can go to I'm like I'm, I'm gonna shoot some of these at f16 but even at f16 even at f22 only about a third of the image will be in focus because of the, the extreme shallow depth of field in macro photography. So if you want the whole image in focus and up close, like a macro shot, you're going to have to do something else called stack, stack focusing. And we're going to do stack focusing with Lightroom and Photoshop. So that's the Lightroom and Photoshop tie-in besides just tethering. But we're going to uh, take a couple shots first to see what we get. Then we'll build up to the stack focusing example. All right, um, you did the same thing testing a Fuji medium format camera. All right, so let's go back to the desktop. And actually, let's go to the desktop so you can see the camera settings too. And I'm going to go ahead and just um, change the position of the camera down a bit so we can get that. Maybe recompose it. I don't know what side I like better. Maybe that side. Tilt it just a little bit and get it locked down. That's another thing because the shallow depth of field and the closeness of the lens and all that, you definitely more than likely want to be on a tripod because I don't care what kind of tripod, but you want to have something that will steady the camera because hand holding, especially if you're going to stack focus, is going to cause a lot of blurry shots. And that, yes, this is a VR lens. Yes, it has vibration reduction or um, uh, what is what is the IS image stabilization on the Canon side? So yes, it is one of those lenses. So I'm going to go down to let's start at f2.8. Or actually, I can't with this particular shot, but we'll go down to f32, and you can start to see it in the live view. So here, let's go to the live view again. You can start to see the focus issues. So if I go over to this spot on the right hand side and focus. Well, great, that's all in focus, but look around the left side of the image. The left side of the image is going to be out of focus. So let's go ahead and take that shot just to see it. So if I take it, 
pops up in Lightroom. Let's go full screen. And again, beautiful. And if you want that shallow depth of field, you're all set. Uh, so the question is, can you um, tether to Lightroom on an Android tablet? Un well, no. Because no, because then you'd be using the Android version of Lightroom, which same as the iOS version of Lightroom. They don't have tethering. Um, if you're on a Windows tablet, like this ZBook, oh, see how I tie that in? Uh, it can flip over and become a tablet. Then yes, Windows, so the yes, then you can tether. Same thing with iOS. I can't tether to an iPad directly either with a cable. Uh, you can do all kinds of wireless things, but um, no direct plugging in a cable like I'm doing now and tethering at the fastest speed. Okay, so I kind of got it locked in. Let's go ahead and, and pick a different focus point. Now I'm focusing on the left side of the flower. And again, when I take that shot, well, the, the very extreme left side of the flower in that area over there looks great, but the rest of the flower doesn't. So this is where we get into, okay, well, let's bump up. Normally, in, tradition, in any other kind of photography, you would just bump up the f-stop so you get more in focus. So I'm going to go up to F71, and I'll come back to the, to the right side of the photo, or right side of the flower, and focus. And even at F71, the edges are still out of focus. Okay, let's bump it up some more. Let's go up to F16. Or no, let's go to F10. F10 looks good. It's starting to get darker because I'm... I'm, I'm uh, at a more closed aperture, but it's still saying it, it, it's still not in focus. All right, so now I can go ahead and adjust the shutter speed, make it a little brighter. So I'm just uh, dropping the shutter speed down to 2.5. Okay, same problem. All right, let's increase the f stop more. Let's go up to f16, where's where I, where I want to be. And even at F15, F16, you're still going to have this issue. Now, again, I can lower the shutter speed more or bump up the ISO. We learned this in the last settings class. Uh, you're always playing between those three things to, uh, to expose your shot properly. So I'm on a tripod. I don't mind if the shutter stays open a little longer. That's great. Um, can you use the focus point using the touch touch screen? Yes, you can. So you can uh, tap to focus. I don't know if I have that feature turned on, but yes, you can do that. All right. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just take another shot just for the hell of it. And again, most of it's in focus, but there's still a lot that isn't. All right. So let's talk about focus stacking. What is that? The, the term stacking should also tell you um, that there is the option of having multiple images that you're going to stack together. And what focus stacking allows you to do either manually, which most cameras don't have an automatic feature for this. This one does, but we're going to do it manually and automatically. If you do it manually, then you're telling, uh, you're telling Lightroom, or I'm sorry, you're telling the camera uh, to take multiple shots, and you're choosing the focus points in each case. So let's go back to the camera so you can see it. I'm going to do a manual focus stack. So first, just so I know where the stack's going to start, I'm just going to take one over here. All right, so now I know that that's the beginning because that'll be the wrong shot. <laughs> and then I'm going to go over now and start my focus stacking. So let's start on the flower we were working with. Let's even change the, um, you know what? We took a lot of that one already. Well, no, we'll stick to that one. We'll change up on the next one. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, these shoots. <laughs> a lot of times I just forget to change the subject. Like I have, a, I have like three sets of flowers over there. I don't have to keep shooting the same one for an hour. Um, but we're going to go ahead and change it in just a minute. But we'll get through this one first. Okay, since this is where our, our example started. So now I'm moving the focus point, and I could touch the screen if I turn that on. I'm going to start on the left side of the photo. And focus on that. And you should see a little green square letting me know that that's where I'm focusing. Yes, I'm shooting in manual mode 90% of the time. Uh, and, and that includes now. So I'm going to go ahead and take the shot. And that will focus on that one spot. So that's shot number one. Shot number two. 
And we'll move over a little bit. Put that in focus. Take that shot. Shot number three. We'll move over a little bit. And you can move over, up, down, whatever parts of the flower you want in focus. You want to make sure you have those parts. We'll move over a little bit more. We'll take that shot. Moved over and down. So that's, I think that's shot number three. All right, now we'll move up and over some more. All right, we'll take that shot. And then last, we'll move all the way to the edge. I can keep taking shots, but I usually do about five. We'll move over to the edge of the photo, all the way on the right-hand side, and we'll take that shot. So now we've taken at least five shots, maybe six. I, I may have lost count. But we took five shots that we want to now stack. So go back to the desktop. There are the five shots. Let's get out of grid or get out of um, or full screen so we can see the grid. And here are the five shots I just took. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and select them all. Now at this point, before you start doing the uh, focus stacking, you could um, do any developing you want to do. You can go into the develop module and, and make any adjustments you want to make to the shots before you do any of this. Or you could do it for the final shot. It's up to you. So um, you could go into the develop module. I just hit the D. I going to make sure. Um, yes, I know what the develop module is. Thank you. I'm going to hit the, uh, that's, that's what happens when you're in a new computer. I'm going to go ahead and turn on auto sync. And now that I got auto sync turned on, I can go go ahead and make some global adjustments to all of these photos. So, for example, I could change the um, the raw profile to be vivid. I want them to be nice and vivid. I can change to uh, auto tone them. I can perhaps bring down the highlights a little more. And let's see here. We got some shadow clipping there, but I'm okay with that shadow clipping because it's not in an important area. We're gonna change the saturation back to zero and away we go so now that's apply that to all five shots okay now what how do we do this focus stacking that i'm talking about well what you um this is like hdr but for focus exactly steve that's that's exactly right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take those five shots six shots eight shots whatever many you need to take and i'm going to right click and I'm going to choose, not stacking, I'm going to actually choose Edit in Photoshop. But not Edit in Photoshop, because if I just choose Edit in Photoshop the way we always do, that's just going to open up five different windows of images. What I want to do instead is I want one image that is the layers. So I want to open those five, six, eight, how many ever shots you took, as one Photoshop file with each image being its own layer. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, Photoshop opens. I had already opened in the background, save time. And it'll take a moment, because those are big raw files, so it'll take a moment to bring each one in and stack it on top of each other. And while you're waiting for this, you could go like change or set if you wanted to like do some do some new ones. I'll do that in a minute. Okay, so all five shots are now open as layers in Photoshop. Um, you're not seeing it because I'm on I'm in the way. Let me move me over. And there we go. So now you should see those five layers that uh, Photoshop just built in the layers panel on the right hand side. Okay, so now that we got our layers, um, let me just, I, I, I want to show you before I jump to actually doing it. Let me zoom in a little bit. So that's layer, that's the top layer. Turn that one off. You can see where the focus is on that one. Turn that one off. You can see where the focus is on that one. And they're like subtle. So there's subtle changes. Like that one seems really blurry in the middle because that's probably the one where it started focusing on the left side. Then it just, the focus goes across the image. Okay, so now that I've got them all, I want to select all five layers. 
and I'm going to do two things. Now, you even notice, even though I'm on a tripod, there's still, because of the focusing, um, there's still a, a slight chance that the image will appear just a fraction bigger or a fraction smaller or a fraction to the left or right. So what we're going to do, just to make sure we're, we're still good, we're going to go up to the Edit menu, and we're going to Auto Align Layers. So Auto Align Layers, and we're just going to leave it on the Auto Setting. And we could do uh, Vignette Removal. We could do G Adjust for Geometric Distortion if we want. Let's go ahead and click OK. And that will take a second, but that will that'll just make sure all the images line up and they're the right size. They're the same size. And we'll give it a second to do that. And that's auto align layers, especially if you were doing this handheld, you'd absolutely want to do that. Uh, that could save you <laughs> if you had a handheld shot. Because if you are hand holding it, there's no way you're going to click five shots without your hand moving a little. All right, I want to try this HDR focus thing manually using that function in Photoshop once I take the photos. All right, so now they're aligned. And if I zoom out a little, we can even see what it did. And that's okay. I'm not worried about that. Even if it left, even if it, left it like that, I can always crop. Now, it, I bowing this, the, the image a little. That's also, I could have turned off that geometric thing and it probably wouldn't have done that. But uh, you can play around with either way, whichever way you like. All right, next up, now that we've done that, edit, auto blend. This is the secret sauce, the auto blend layers, which is right underneath the auto align. All right, so let's go to auto blend layers. And there are two choices. Normally, you would be doing this for making a panorama. We're not making a panorama. And Photoshop's even kind of figured that out. That's why it changed it to stack. So we're going to stack the images. We're going to do seamless tones and colors and content aware fill those transparent areas. So now we'll click OK. There we go. And it will start processing. So it's going to take the five layers and make a new six layer of the five put together. It's also going to uh, not it's, it, so it's going to blend them by masking the areas of the images. You'll, you'll see. It's easier to just wait and let you see it. <laughs> thinking about it, thinking about it, thinking about it. And right now it's probably doing the content aware fill part. And yep, that's what it was doing. And now it's done. So I'm going to go ahead and control, um, control D to deselect. So it filled in those transparent areas. It gave me a new focused image. And if I were to zoom in on this image now, we can see that the focus is good all the way across. So that looks in focus. That looks nice and sharp on the left. That looks nice and sharp on the, on the left and right, the top, bottom. So that's why we do focus stacking. All right, let's zoom out a little bit. Now let's look at what it actually did. In the lower um, part of the layers panel, we still have all five original layers. But notice, I'm going to hold down my Alt key, Option key on the Mac, and click. This is the mask it made for that layer. That's the mask it made for that layer. So it's hiding focus stuff. That's the, um, oh, sorry. Hang on. Oh, what did I do? What did I do? There we go. I clicked on something by mistake. But anyway, there's the mask for that layer. There's the mask for that layer. There's the mask for that layer. And so those are the, uh, looks almost 3D. I know, it's 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 super cool. It's, it's cool, you know, this is why we're doing this. Are we live? Jan, no, we're not live. This is a recording. I am going in the future and speaking specifically to you, Jan. Have a good day. All right, so anyway, let's uh, hold down our Alt key again. And let's again deselect that, and that would be our focus stack from tethering. Okay. <laughs> How's it going, Jan? Long time no see. All right. Um, or is it Jan? Is it Jan or Jan? I think it's 
I don't know. Am I am I been pronouncing your name wrong all along? I, I'm sorry if I have. Okay. Um, we've got this one done. So we could save it and close it. So we can go ahead and do that. Save. And I <laughs> no, I'm not a Windows user yet. I uh, uh, I I'm I'm by 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 platform. So I use both oh, and have for years. Uh, I gave that story up front. You missed it. So HP or HP and Intel sent me this nice machine to to play with and practice and and show to my Windows users as well. Jan, yeah, so I thought yeah, I was blowing it all along. Okay. So anyway, we've got our new image right next to the old one. It's a TIFF right now because I haven't changed the settings on this machine to bring it back as a PSD. But all the layers are there, the masking, so forth and so on. So, on. as a matter of fact, speaking of that, let's go ahead and do that now before I forget. Because every time it happens, I'll just be like, oh yeah, I forgot to change it. Catalog settings. File handling. Uh, or is it in the regular set? Oh, it's, I'm sorry, it's not in the catalog settings. It's in the regular preferences. I know it's always on one or the other. Regular preferences. And this file handling. And when I'm done, should be file handling. I thought it was file handling. Am I in the wrong spot once again? External editing. There we go. External editing, come back as a PSD. All right, so um, I just prefer all my images when they go over to Photoshop to come back as a PSD and not come back as a TIFF. That's just a personal preference. You do what you want. Okay, uh, <laughs> Jan, thanks for the love. Okay, so now let's change the subject so we don't have to keep shooting the same flower. We have all these beautiful flowers here. So I'm going to walk over and just simply find something different to shoot. Do I like the look, look of that one? I could use that one. Uh, let's turn, actually, I kind of like that. Let's turn this one around. All right, so we'll shoot something different now. Okay, next example. We're going to, um, we're going to do a focus stack with the camera doing it for us. So how does that work? So first of all, let's just take a shot and see what this looks like. Make sure I got it. Um, position the way I want. So I'm just going to move this up a little bit. So that flower's a little taller. Compose it over to the right. Move it down. And we're still on tethering, so you should see this. And that's the flower we're going to be working with now. Okay, so let's get the settings right first, and then we'll, show, we'll talk about how to do it automatic if your camera supports it. So we did it manually. We took a shot, moved the focus point, took a shot, moved the focus point until we took all the shots and then brought them in. But there's a way, if your camera has this setting, there's a way for your camera to do all of that for you. And it'll just automatically do the whole thing. All right, so let's get this down first. Um, I am going to adjust the shutter speed. So I don't want to go up on ISO. I'm on a tripod. I don't care if it takes a second to take the shot. There we go. And I could even use a little exposure compensation. I'll brighten it about a stop. And I'll move the focus point over. And just we're just testing. And that's 1.6 of a second. 1.6 seconds to take that shot. And I'm happy with that. I'm I'm quite pleased with that. Okay, so now let's go ahead and set up the camera to do it automatically. So again, this isn't in all cameras. Um, there are even some new cameras that don't have this yet, but I expect it to be in all cameras going forward. Like, it's just dumb not to do it. And also, there's no reason why uh, Canon, Nikon, and all the other ones, if you're listening, you couldn't do this as a firmware update. Like, this is not something that you have to have new hardware for. You're just telling the camera to do something automatically. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to Menu again. 
I'm going to go over to the, because I don't have this in my, in the my menu. Oh, I keep doing that. So I'm going to just go up. Sorry, I keep moving the wrong thing. There we go. I'm just going to go up and over. And then now it's all the way at the bottom. So one quick way to get to the bottom instead of me going down, 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 down. is just to go back up from the top and it will cycle back around. And there it is. Focus shift shooting. Now it's grayed out. Last night when I was trying this for the first time or, yes, or a couple days ago when I was trying this for the first time, I'm like, why is that grayed out? Google. Focus shift, you know, not available on Nikon Z6. And they give you all these reasons why it may not be available, what mode you're in. Nope, I'm not in any of those modes. I'm not, and I don't have any of those settings turned on. It's just not, that's not right. What's wrong? Turns out you cannot focus shift automatically while you're tethered. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to cancel the tethering on the laptop, and I'm going to turn off the camera because I need to do two things. Turn off the camera, so it'll go blank on your side for a second. Disconnect the tether cable because I can't do this while I'm tethered. And since I'm not tethered anymore, I need a memory card. So I'm going to take the memory card and put the memory card back in. All right, memory cards in, and we got our, our shot back. I think I moved the camera a little bit. Let's go back to menu, and now focus shift is available. Lo and behold, it wasn't until I yanked the cable, I was like, is that it? That was it, so I tried everything else besides that. Okay, next up, let's go ahead and um, let's talk about the settings. Number of shots. Like I said, I normally do five. Normally, like I've only been doing this for a while, a little while. I uh, normally do five. You can set this from, I think, uh, the choices are one to 100. So you could literally take, have it take 100 shots and stack them all together. That seems a bit extreme to me, but... <laughs> um, so can you process focus... Sucking in Lightroom or only Photoshop? Focus stacking, it's, uh, it's a Photoshop thing because uh, Lightroom doesn't have the auto blending. All right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Mike, I knew what you meant. Okay, so, um, so up to 100 shots. Like I said, I like to do five. Uh, focus step width. This is pretty cool. So remember I moved all the way from one side of the photo to the other, flower to the other? This is that same thing. You wanted to just move a little. We wanted to move a lot, so I, I have it set to wide. Okay, next up, interval until next shot. I'm telling it just for the camera to settle down, take a second. You can have it zero. It can just go click, 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 click. But because I'm in a relatively low, lower lighting and I'm having it, having it, and by the way, I could move the lighting. <laughs> I didn't think of that. I could actually move the lighting to light that a little better. Uh, so it doesn't have to, I don't have to shoot as low. But anyway, um, you can have it be zero. I just change it to one second. Okay, next. First frame exposure lock on. So that means when it takes the first frame, it won't, if you were shoot, I'm on manual, so it doesn't matter. But if you were on aperture priority or something else, it wouldn't, um, it would take the first shot and keep the rest the same exposure. So I don't have to worry about that on my manual. And then if you were like somewhere where you need to be quiet, you can have it do it silently so you wouldn't even hear the shutter. It would just take the shots. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and back out of that. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I need to go back into that because you start. So you actually go to start, and once you're ready, that's it. It's preparing. You're not seeing it, but and I'm not seeing it because the screen's black. So I guess it can't live view while it's doing it. But I hear, I hear it. It's doing it. And then it's done. Okay. So now that it's done, let's go back to the desktop. I'm going to turn the camera off. And I'm going to take the card out. And we'll put the card in a card reader. I have a card reader here for my XQD cards. 
and we'll just go ahead and plug that in. All right, so once that's plugged in, we'll just go tell it to do an import. Those are the images it did. These were the dark ones I talked about earlier. Remember when I said, oh, I, you know, it looks good. Click, 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 click. But I wasn't reviewing them until I got them into the computer and realized what I was seeing in live view wasn't reality. This was reality. So we want those. So we'll just select those, tell it to turn those off. The other ones are already been imported, so they're grayed out. And then we'll go ahead and tell it to... Uh, let's go over our settings that I have it set here. Now, normally, I talk about the build previews, and, um, and I always tell you that I keep it on minimal. Um, it would be great to see a live pet photo shoot. You think pets stay still for a live stream? You're delusional. <laughs> At least not my pet. Uh, anyway, um, so I normally do it on minimal because if I'm importing a batch of hundreds of images, there's no chance that I um, there's no chance that it, it's going to um, uh, there, there's probably the likelihood of me going through every single image at one to one is unlikely. So I don't build one to one previews for that. But in this case, since it's a tutorial and since it's live and we want it to be quick. We're going to go ahead and let it build a one-to-one -one previews, which I normally never do. Uh, I just build them when I click on the images because I'm not going to click on every single one. Build smart previews too, so I can work offline. That way, if I take this laptop with me somewhere else, as long as the catalog's with me, I'll have those previews even if the images aren't. Don't import sp suspected duplicates, so that's why the other red flowers are grayed out or pink flowers are grayed out. Um, apply a develop setting during uh, import. Lisa's, my, Lisa's the dog. Lisa's our dog. So that's who's, you know, Tim, he's asked, who's Lisa? Lisa's the dog. Uh, someone sometimes called Ruru, because <laughs> she actually barks like that, Ruru. And sometimes called um, Pixel, because that's what everyone thought her name should have been. All right. So let's, uh, metadata template, yes, and put all my copyright stuff in there, and also put it in a collection, or put it in that folder, but put it in the collection as well. And here come the five shots, and the card's been ejected. So I can take it back out and put it back in the uh, camera now. Okay, so I can go and quickly look at them. Um, even though it's building the one one previews, I can at least get the first one. Ooh, that looks pretty good. Good. Yeah, you start to see the focus change. See the shift in focus from that one to that one. And then you see the shift in focus. So you just keep seeing it getting more and more in focus on the other side. So this side is out of focus now. And now this side becomes in focus. And it's just, it's so much cooler when it's doing it for you. All right. Um, sound is back now. I didn't know I lost sound, but hopefully you guys have sound. Nope. The battery did not die. We're good. Uh, so you have sound now. Good. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, jump out. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go to the collection, by the way. We should be working in the collection all the time. There they all are. And we're going to take these five that we just did. And same thing, if you want to develop them, you can. Go to develop first. Do the same kinds of things we talked about. So I can apply um, Adobe Vivid. I can uh, leave the white balance as shot. Or I could white balance the shots as well. Uh, auto toning looks pretty good. It's already done lens correction in the body. So I don't need to do anything there. And the shadow details are fine. Okay. So now let's go ahead and right click. And let's go in and uh, edit in Photoshop. Open as layers in Photoshop. So same thing, it's opening up each layer 
as a uh, as each file as a separate layer in the same document. And we'll just give it a second to process that. And while I'm waiting for that, let me pop over here to the window. Let me see if I still have that on the clipboard. I do. Oh, I can't post more than 200 characters. Well, that sucks. All right, I'll have to do this in two passes. Still no. Still no. Hang on a second, folks. I'm trying to get you some some data about the uh, gear here. I might have to do these one at a time. So the chat is not letting me post paste the whole thing in. It's too too big. Stupid chat. All right. Okay. So there's the Z book for for Jan. All right. Let's paste them in again. That's the computer I'm using. Uh, a lot of people always ask about the Platypod. So let's do that one next. All right, there's the Platypod. And yeah, that would be great if they were on a site where I could actually do it. <laughs> they're, they're just literally in my notepad. So let's compare V again. And it's going to take too long, folks. I might have to bail out of doing this. Here's the ball. Here's a ball head for that you can use. It's pretty, pretty inexpensive. And let's go down. All right, here are the, the gooseneck arms that hold the lights. Don't worry, we will finish this before the stream's over. And here are the lights. Great, and one more, maybe two more. All right, two more. Here's the camera, and here's the lens, and we're done. All right, and there's the lens, okay. Uh, and if you're watching this on, you happen to be watching this on YouTube, it's already in the YouTube description. So you guys can just go see it there. All right, next up. So we, we did our, our images. Um, they're all stacked together. We're going to do our last two steps here really quickly before we end the day. So let's go ahead and select these. All layers. Go up to the edit menu. Once again, we're going to choose auto align layers because there is some shifting going on. Um, you can also remove any geometric distortion. So let's go ahead and do that. No problem, Bobby. That's why I wanted you guys to have the links because you guys always ask for that stuff later on. And it's just, I put it together earlier. I should have put it together as a link. <laughs> it would have been easier, uh, but I thought I'd be able to just post it in as a note. I'll add them to a web, web page somewhere where I will have a, a bit.ly or a small URL going forward. All right, so that's processing. It would be good to do the pasting while this is processing. Future note. All right, while we're waiting for that, I'm going to go ahead and take the memory card back out. Instead of using two of the, uh, the whatchamacallit lights, could you use one instead? Sure. If you can light it with one light, absolutely. 
You don't have to have two. Depends on what you're trying to do. All right, so then it just auto aligned them. So now let's do the auto blend. So let's auto blend layers. And again, we're going to choose not panorama. We're going to choose stack image. And then we're going to say seamless tones and colors and content aware fill the transparent areas. Let's go ahead and do that. This should go a little quicker than the stack or the auto align did. And now it's doing this last thing where it's content aware filling the rest of the blank spaces, blank space into the flowers. From the flowers into the blank space. All right. And here's our focused macro shot. Nice, nice, nice and focus. Great colors. Look at that award-winning stuff there. Nice and focused all the way across or whatever you choose to focus if you do it manually. Ex extreme zooms. All right, Eric, what don't you get? <laughs> you don't get what? You can't just say I don't get it. You don't get zooming, you don't get panning. What is it that you don't get? Okay, um, great photo, and that's just me playing around. Imagine if I was actually taking my time to do it. <laughs> so, uh, guys, focus stacking lets you just have control over what parts of a macro shot are in focus. Um, we could have even moved these closer and taken a closer shot. Let's get one in before we end. So let's get one close up in. So I'm just going to move this they're on, sitting on top of an apple box inside of a vase. And I'm just going to move this flower vase all the way over. And it's about, I would say, seven or eight inches from the front of the lens. And that's another great thing about macro photography is that you can be super close to the subject. So let's go ahead and put this back in. We've got two minutes left. All right, and let's go ahead and tether again. Start tether capture. Start tether capture. Oh, <laughs> might help if you are not in Photoshop. There we go. Let's go back to Lightroom. All right, file, tether capture, start tether capture. Uh, same as before. Click OK. And camera on. Super extreme close up. Oh, I didn't mean to take that shot, but super extreme close up. There we go. And there's my super blurry shot. Now let's take a real one. There we go. There's a real one coming up next. And you can just do some really super amazing, nicely. Maybe I don't want focus stacking on this one. I kind of like the shallow depth of field on this one. All right. That's it. That is sh how to shoot small objects in your small space <laughs> uh, with a macro lens. Uh, so you can get super clo close and tight on the subject. And if you want to control the focusing, you can use Lightroom and Photoshop. Or you can just use Photoshop. You don't have to use Lightroom. But you can use Lightroom and Photoshop to um, stack them together that they are um, you're controlling where the focus points are all right next up is the photoshop daily creative challenge i want to thank you guys and again remember next week don't complain there's no there's no master classes next week but there are master classes all the rest of today so if you want to go and check something out today today's the day to do it uh, up next is the photography, I'm sorry, the Photoshop uh, Daily Creative Challenge. And after that, I think Paul Tranny's up with the design. And then there's probably an XD Creative Challenge. And uh, Howard will be up. And Jason, actually, Jason's up before Howard. Jason Levine will be doing audio and video. Then Howard. Then, um, then I believe Kyle Webster will finish us off at the end of the day. All right. So thanks, everybody. I don't have a week off. No, no, just next Friday. <laughs> It would be great if we had the week off. No.
We're just taking off next Friday. So next Friday, no master classes. We'll be back the following week for more. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one, and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Remember, remember, close-ups, flowers, macro.